Hi there. So I've received hundreds of requests to provide a step-by-step -step video on how to create a dynamic map in Excel. I do have a video that's received or, or had thousands and thousands of views that shows you a dynamic map of the U.S. and then I uh, provide uh, links to the the, uh, the download for the map if you wanted to use that. But I've uh, received hundreds of requests to show a step-by-step -step guide on how to create it. So that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, this will be a multi-part series um, because there are quite a few steps involved with creating a map, but also will allow you to watch the individual parts that are applicable to any, any steps that you may be hung up on or need to revisit. So instead of having to watch one long video over and over or trying to search through the video, you can simply watch the part that you need to revisit. To give you a quick overview of the map uh, that I had uploaded previously, this is a map of the U.S., obviously, and it's showing the total number of uninsured in the U.S. And th this data set's a little outdated. This is pre-Affordable Care Act, so don't, don't pay attention to the accuracy of the data, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I have it divided up by Republican or Democratic-led states. And so you can see here it's currently set to all. I can click on Republican, so then it only shows you the Republican states along with the applicable shading based on the range of uninsured Americans. And then you have Democratic. And then so I'll go back to all. And then so it's currently set to number of uninsured, but then you can also select the percent of the state population on uninsured and then the percent of uh, the U.S. population uninsured. Okay, so let's start uh, with the shapes themselves. So this first part, part one, will focus on how to create the map itself. And this will be the most time-consuming component of the process for you to create a dynamic map. To put this in perspective, this map alone, just the shapes, took me hours and hours to do that and uh, that's because you're having to trace each individual state and the more accurate you want it the more time it's going to take um, this is certainly not a perfect map you can see there's some gaps between the states but um, for my purposes it was sufficient the biggest thing is you want people to recognize the shapes um, and I think for and in, in regards to that I, I did a decent job at that um, even if your shapes are not perfect, you can always apply names to them just to make sure people know what they are. But um, again, um, this will be the, the most time-consuming part of the, uh, the process. So let's open up a new Excel workbook. Uh, this will work with any version of Excel. This happens to be Excel 2013. And I think I created the original version in Excel 2008. So you can use any version. Uh, probably going back to 2003, but I, I can't imagine many of you have that older version, but I think you could use it. So the first thing we need to do is a, retrieve a map of the United Kingdom. That's what we're going to focus on in our series here. And so you can just go to through Chrome or Google or whatever the case is, search for United Kingdom map. This is the one I'm going to use. Uh, you can right click copy or save image as. And so I'm going to insert a picture. And so here's the map we're going to use for the tracing. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so I can show you on this video. But truth be told, the, the, the larger the map is, and you can always zoom in as well, but the larger the map is, the more accuracy it will give you when you're trying to trace the shapes. And actually, Probably the most effective way to do it is if you had one of those electronic pen and, and pad uh, applications um, where you can actually, uh, you'll get, it'll give you more detail or more accuracy when you're trying to trace these shapes. Uh, but you can use a mouse. I used a mouse for the uh, US map, uh, but just be wary that it's going to take more time and, and especially uh, with the more curves and whatnot applicable in the shape. So let's start out by tracing Northern Ireland. Click on Insert. And this may be a little bit different depending on which version you have of Excel, but in 2013, it's under the Illustrations tab. 
but you just need to make sure you get to shapes okay insert shapes and you can't use any of the predefined shapes because you need to actually be able to trace and so what we're going to click on is this little squiggly, squiggly line which is actually called scribble and then you will simply uh, trace the shape in question and I know this is not going to be super pretty but this just gives you an idea how much time this part of the process can take. Uh, obviously the more uh, square your countries or whatever are, the easier the shape is to, uh, to trace. So the UK is probably not the easiest one to do, um, but you can do it. And so now we need to name the shape. And I want you to focus on this box in the upper left hand corner. And basically it's telling you which cell you're in, but then once you click on the shape, it tells you the name of that shape. And right now the default name is Freeform 2. We're going to change that. And you can change that right in this box. I'm going to name it Northern Ireland. And with no space between Northern and Ireland, and so no matter what you do, once you click back on the box, it's named Northern Ireland. Okay. Now let's go and trace the rest of Ireland. Again, I know this won't be very pretty. And this is probably not the best example case of all of these little islands uh, off, offshoots to the uh, the mainland there. You can, you can capture those and what you have to do is trace them individually and then what you end up doing is grouping the shapes together and then you name the group of shapes so in this case, if we wanted to spend the time to uh, capture all those little islands for Ireland, you'd have to group them all together and then name the shape or the group of shapes. And we're going to name this Ireland. Okay. Now let's go grab Wales. Oops, that one in capture. Make sure you push enter after you uh, enter the name. You can't just click outside the box or outside the shape. You have to actually push enter. Let's go capture England. Again, I know this is not very pretty but we'll at least give you a guide on, how, on where to start. And then lastly, Scotland. And you can see Scotland, if you really want to get in, into some detail, Scotland would uh, take quite some time because of all these little islands. But we're just going to trace the mainland for now. Again, I know it's not very pretty. And we need to name Scotland. Okay, so let's make sure all of our names have, all of our shapes have names. Looks like I forgot to name England. So there's England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Wales. Okay, so we're all set. And so let's zoom out a little bit. We can delete this map now. We don't need it any longer. And this is going to be our interactive map page. Let's go ahead and rename this. So this will be the page that you want your um, audience to, to see. And then just to make these shapes stand out, let's go ahead and change the background. Let's change it to white and then we'll add a nice thick border around it as well. Okay, so I know it doesn't look very pretty and if someone uh, who wasn't familiar with the United Kingdom looked at this, they probably couldn't tell what it was, but this will give you just an idea of what's required. Uh, you can add as much detail as you want, 
but this will probably will will definitely be the most time consuming part of the process. So let me stop there. This is part one. And for part two, we'll start drilling down on some of the macros required uh, for the shading that will be, that's basically the dynamic part. The shading will be based on data ranges and uh, we'll go through that.